All right. Lambert's Board of Sports facing the big brother. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as both being diehard tech fans, we can't beat Marshall. All right. Marshall um, is not a bad team, by the way. They're 3-0. They're in the Sun Belt Conference. So Marshall uh, has improved the program. Uh, the head coach is a former, you know, Nick Saban guy. He coached under Nick Saban. So I guess he's trying to bring a little bit of the Alabama, you know, culture in Marshall, which they're not bad. We're not saying Marshall's the worst team. This is not Rice or, you know, Texas State. You know what I'm saying? But this is, you know, Marshall beat Virginia Tech for the first time since 1940. Um, I thought it was some very good outcomes in the game. I like that we uh, ran the ball with the quarterback, especially in the first drive with Kyron Jones. I think he played excellent. But when you have a bad offensive coordinator, I don't know what to tell you. We have a bad offensive coordinator. You went away from running with the quarterback. You couldn't really run the ball. Yet again, you can't stop the run because Marshall at least ran for about 150, 160 yards, which he will explain in a second. But, um, yeah, we find ways to lose games. And like I said, this is the third game or fourth, third game of the season, or at least that we have a chance to at least tie the game or win it at the end, and we can't do it. And that false start on fourth and one, just let it downhill and the celebration begin. Go ahead and explain this whole game and what in the hell is wrong with Virginia Tech. And please, can we fire Tyler Bowens, the offensive coordinator, and at least consider hiring me? Because I call plays better than his sorry ass. Yeah, um, I'll start by giving Marshall their credit. Like, this is a Marshall team that beat Notre Dame last year. This is, you know, a program on the rise. So all credit to Marshall. But we should have whooped y'all's ass, bro. And it's it's just so uh, upsetting, bro. It like you said, third week in a row that we have been in contention late in the game to win. And what did I say? The very first show that I appeared on on Lambo's World of Sports, talking about our three and eight team last year. Five of those losses, or four of those loss, no, five of those losses last year were one possession games. And we have all we already have three one possession losses in four weeks. Okay, so the trend is continuing, and I did not expect this team to go off and win nine games or something. I thought we were gonna win like five or six, and I still think we can win five or six, but it's getting it's just getting increasingly difficult to go into each week with confidence in anything this team is doing. We finally got a run game going this game. Tootin had 88 yards on 9.8 yards of carry. The team as a whole, 184 rushing yards for 6.1 yards of carry. We gave Tootin the ball nine times. The man's got 10 yards of carry on the ground, and we gave it to him nine times. We ran the ball 15 times with Kyron Jones. Now, that does include sacks, I will say. But he got very involved in the running game, as he should be. And it kept us in the game. 31-yard touchdown. Uh, 75 yard game, 75 yards in the game as a whole. But he had an untimely turnover, which is going to happen when it's your second ever start in college football. So, like, I'm fine with – I'm not fine with it. Don't get me wrong. But versus, you know, Grant throwing the ball into defender's chest – every other freaking drive, I'll take this. You know, like, I'll take that. He's not putting the ball in danger. Um, But, yeah, I mean, the offense just stalled, bro. On We forced two – we had two interceptions on the Marshall QB. Two. You need to score points off of turnovers. And we were two for 13 on third downs. We had nine penalties for 70 yards. We couldn't sustain a drive for the life of us. And we scored 17 points – Now, again, to a team that allowed 22 points against Notre Dame last year. But Notre Dame had a much worse quarterback, but still a a way better team than what we have this year. And it just it pisses me off so much because we should have won that game. We had opportunities to win it. And I'm not going to just completely ride Kyron Drones and say that, like, he did a great job or whatever. Like, he played well. He didn't put the ball in danger, but he still only completed 54 percent of his passes. Now, it's not completely on him because the offensive play calling is dog shit. And it, 
I don't want to call for his job yet, but it's four weeks in and he doesn't, he looks like we're doing the same type of BS that we were doing with Brad Cornelson, who's the Sam Houston offensive coordinator that's leading the worst offense in college football right now. So yeah, it's a step up from that, but I'm pretty sure we're still only scoring like our average is probably under or right around 20 points a game right now. I mean, that's got to be, I don't know the, I don't have the stats right in front of me, but that's got to be one of the worst offenses in the country still. That's what was the deal last year. So then we go to the defensive side of the ball. We still can't stop the run. Obviously, Rasheen Ali just manhandled us by himself pretty much. 174 yards, two touchdowns. Obviously broke two huge ones, one of them all the way for a touchdown. But it's just infuriating, bro. It's so upsetting. Um, we still have a chance to, like, win five games. But – well, and let me correct myself from earlier. We did not lose by one possession to Rutgers. They obviously pulled away one by 19. I'm just saying five minutes to, to go in the game, it was a five-point game. So, or eight minutes, whatever it was. It was a five-point game. We had the chance. We just let them get away with it. So, Pitt, I think we have a chance. Florida State, no chance. Wake Forest is up in the air. Syracuse, Looks pretty good so far, so I'm not super confident about that one. Um, Louisville looks pretty good as well. I'm not confident about that. Boston College, I think, will be a shootout. Dude, dude we can't beat Boston College. No matter how bad Boston College is, we can't find a way to beat Boston College. We, we beat them last year. By how much? 14. It's wow. 24 to 10. Well... You know, well, I'm, I'm, I, I'll correct myself. I'm still not confident to beat Boston College because, like yeah. I said, we can't. Be, even though Boston College and Pittsburgh are kind of like mid tier teams, we still can't beat them. But, but go ahead and finish. I apologize. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Um, yeah. So I, to just reiterate my list here, I've got Pitt as like a 50 50 game. I don't think we're beating Syracuse. I don't think we're beating Louisville. Boston College is a 50 50 game. Wake Forest is whatever i don't really know what's going on down there um nc state our d our past defense can and has shut down brennan armstrong multiple times so it's like he's he's not going to beat us but they do have enough i think that they can probably take that from us uva i'm, I'm chalking that up as a dub their quarterback is very young and still learning <laughs> that's that's what I'll say. I won't trash him too hard, but he's not very good right now. Um, so yeah, I, I see. Yeah, I mean, we might win four games this year. I'm just being completely honest. Looking at looking at the roster, uh, looking at the lineup here, we might win four games. So it's a step up from three wins, but God, gosh darn it, you know, like oh my god. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I just talked for eight and a half minutes, but no, 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 stop that. That's fine. I'm not impressed about eight and a half minutes. I'm, I'm just the way my face is like that is because every time I want tech to be good, they just don't do good. And every and, and, and my aunt that graduated from Virginia Tech in 1995, congratulations to her. She always keeps talking about tech, 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 and I'm like, do you understand? We not that good this year. We. Every time we try to be good, we just don't exceed expectations. Now, I understand we're rebuilding all this other stuff, but it's like, as a hard, diehard Virginia Tech fan, as being around Inter Salmon, as being around the atmosphere, as being around the beautiful university, being around the fans, like the passion of Virginia Tech fans, as me on Totem Pole Nation, me and coaches went to that game, went on the field, and went on the field, went through that locker room for free. We didn't pay nothing, by the way, for free. And that's not the point. The passion of these fans, they love Virginia Tech football, despite of all the other college football games that probably have never attended to, never attended Alabama game, Ole Miss. I know there's other stadiums like Penn State with the whiteout stuff, LSU with, you know, the Baton Rouge, toughest places to play, especially Virginia Tech as well. But – but Jerry Tech going to a Tech football game, that is hella different. No matter if it's a 12 o'clock game, a 3.30 game. Now, I've never been to an 8 o'clock game. I've only been to a 12 and a 3.30 game. But 
the atmosphere and the passion for the Virginia Tech fans, it's like every time we have a chance, we just fall. I mean, it's like we want to cut on our beds and, and just start crying because it's like we had it. Yeah. We had it. But in the third, it's always that third quarter. It's always the third or fourth quarter where we just like, we don't know how to play football. I understand it's a rebuilding mode. I'm not calling for Brent Price's job. It's, it's, it's really hard to, to rebuild that tech team. Even when um, Frank Beamer was in retirement, they were kind of falling off a little bit. And then Fuente kind of had the team back in 2016 with them going to AC championship game against Clemson, only losing by seven, which was great. Only losing by seven, but then it was up, down, up, down, losing QBs, losing Hen and Hooker. Quincy Patterson was great. I mean, I got I got the game, I got the game on my video when we went to the game against UNC in 2019. Then went five, six overtimes. It's on it's on my phone. He got the game with a touchdown. Yep. It's on my phone recorded. That's the last time I've been happy as probably a tech fan. Against UNC, against a great high scoring team. But when it comes to this, it's like, how much more can we take? Because every week we we want to predict, we have faith. That's what you're supposed to do. But it's like in the back of your head, it's like we've seen the same story over and over and over and over again. Now, I understand Grant Wells has an injury. I'm not saying he's a bad person. I'm just talking about his football. Okay, this football is completely garbage. Yeah, All right. Sucks. I understand. He, I understand. Bad. Yes, I understand he's going through an ankle injury. I'm not calling that man a bad human being. I'm saying your football is garbage. All right. So I don't want. I don't want to get criticized. Somebody who's a bad human being. All right. You're you're bad at football, or at the quarterback spot. All right. You made college. So I can't call you a bad football player. But not a lot of quarterbacks can make it to, you know, these type of power five schools. But my point in this, where does Brent Pry go? Now, is Grant Wells officially healed? Now I understand Pop Watson went through a suspension and whatnot. I don't really want to get into that. It's freshman stuff. We all do stupid stuff. Yeah, it, it'll be fun. That's all great. But it's like at the same time, where does Brent Pry go? Tech falls to one and three. Don't bring in Grant Wells back. Please don't bring that no. back. No. I'm confident in Kyron Jones. If we go three and eight with Kyron Jones, I'm fine with that. All right, he has to learn. He has to get in the system. But I want to stick with Kyron Jones for the rest of the year, and I'm just hoping to God that Brick Pride makes the right decision. But I am calling for Todd Bowen's job because it, 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 the play calling is just ass. Every every drive, it's like it gets consistent. And then it's like halftime, either when you make adjustments, it's like, did you forget how to call plays? And I just say he's calling from the booth. So calling from a booth as a coach, or calling, you know, from a booth or calling for like up the scoreboard in high school. You can see everything. It's a great view. You can see everything. It's hard to see from the bottom. In this case, people that don't really know coaching, like it's hard to see stuff from the bottom. That's why you have a headset from a guy upstairs. It's easier to see everything on top. But my point is, this play calling, is, it, it's got to get – I don't have confidence in this play calling getting any better. I just don't because it's the same thing. We have a dual-threat quarterback. All right, we have it. Now, I didn't think Justin Fuente was a bad coach. I just think he kind of lost the team. Um, you know, like his final two years of tech, I think he just lost the team. I don't think he was a bad coach. Well, the community was, didn't like him either. Like, but he, he was never out and, like, active with the students and stuff. You know, like, I literally went to school during his entire – I mean, my entire ride here until last year was Fuente. So – like that's three years that I've sat and watched our team fall from, you know, like I got into tech in 2018 in that December we lose to ODU and then it's like, damn, but we're still good. We were just in the ACC championship two years ago. Like we'll be fine. Freshman year. We have high hopes. We win that six overtime game, but we go like 500 or something. And then, the next year, there was a COVID year, we lost a bunch of one-possession games, which has been the theme since literally 2020. You can go to every – like, we lost to Notre Dame at home by one touchdown. It, a late touchdown that they drove down the field to go get. Like, we had that game, and we just gave it up. So, like, the, like you talked about with the fans and the culture and everything, like, it's still there. 
it's still this is like Virginia Tech, but it's just on a national scheme or like national, I don't know, screen basically. We haven't been anything since 2016, 2017. So now where do you go? And I like I'm with you. Like where where do you where do you go from here? Because we're not getting we have a good Virginia Tech like within Virginia recruiting class this year, but we just lost a guy to Ohio State. And I not gonna just put it past us that he decommitted from us and went to Ohio State because like, damn. I don't know if I want to be a part of a complete rebuild. So it's going to be hard to get, you know, the top level guys at like in the state and in the surrounding states without at least putting some success on the field. So like, I don't think we can win three games again this year and expect a huge turnaround the following year. Like this is, it's getting to a level of like your on field success is going to start majorly hurting you. Like regardless of how good Brent Pry is at recruiting, which he's he was obviously great at at Penn State, and he's shown flashes here, like as and the staff as a whole in recruiting, it's not going to matter if we suck on the field. So yeah, I don't I don't know where to go with it. I mean, I think we we might win four games this year. Hopefully, we can squeeze out a fifth. But uh, I'm I'm looking at like a the rest of the schedule right here. I'm looking at a four win season for the boys. Yeah, that'd be a tough one, but that that would be more to probably debate on tomorrow as we go through the college football predictions. But the next game we're gonna talk about, uh, Matt Pat was right about Utah. He picked Utah uh, until he has no reason to. Um, UCLA scores seven points for the first time or a very low score since two thousand two. I mean, they scored seven points. When I look at that, I was shocked. He scored seven points. It was a low scoring game. So UCLA played some great defense, which I'm not mad. But we're talking about Dante Moore. You scored seven points. I mean, we got to talk about this next because I'm. I got to figure. We both got to figure out what in the world happened that you only scored seven goddamn points. You scored less points than Florida did. I mean, my God, less points than Florida did and less points than Baylor. We're gonna talk about this in Lambo's World of Sports. 